Hi and welcome back to the Low Level Devil Channel's Raspberry Pi Bare Metal series. If you haven't seen the previous videos in this series, take a look at the comments section. I'll post a link to the playlist. In the previous video, we learned how to set up the interrupt vectors and handle interrupts in our kernel. Now in the next video, I want to show you how to use more of the interrupts, specifically the system timer interrupts. Now before moving on, first I want to cover one issue with the previous video. While putting together this video, I noticed some strange behavior in the MiniUART interrupts that were affecting the system timer. On further research, I learned there were some, actually some errors in the data sheet. So let's get started by taking a look at the errata page of the data sheet. So if we open up this URL here, we can see the BCM2835 data sheet errata and under P12 we have the AUX MUI error register. Now two things important to note here is bits 2 and 3 are marked as don't care but they're actually required in order to see interrupts correctly and bit 1 and 0 are swapped so bit 0 is the receive interrupt whereas bit 1 is the transmit so and we were setting yeah bit 1 so now what we want to change this to is D so that'll set that bits 3 and 2 and bit 0 so now it should be working correctly so let's go along and create a timer dot H in our peripherals and we're gonna start with a pragma once right and actually first let's go over to the IRQs so we want to change these video core IRQs to add a couple of other IRQs that we can handle and these are going to be in section 6.2.4 of the data sheet. So if we open that data sheet here we can see the video core interrupts are listed here. So we have 0, 1, 2, and 3 are for system timer 0, 1, 2, and 3. So these are the bits we're going to care about in addition to of course our AUX, the 29th bit that we're using already. So let's go ahead and come back to this enum here. I'm going to add one f first for sys timer IRQ0 where 1. And uh, set that value to 1. We have 2, 3, and 4. And these are going to go in powers of 2. So we got 1, 2, 4, and 8. Right, so now that we have those set up, let's go back over here into the timer, timer.h file. Now we'll start by doing the uh, structure for the timers, include our headers. And we're going to actually make it define for the clock hertz. This is how fast the system timer clock runs. And that number is 1 million because it's 1 megahertz timer. So this is going to be in section 10.2, the timer registers. So let's go back to the data sheet and open that up and take a look. I already have it open here. So we have the system timer registers. And you'll notice that this is at address, let's see, 3000. So we'll have to pen that to our base. So now at offset 0 we have the CS register aka control status register then we have a C low and C high followed by C0 through C3 for the system timer compare for 0, 1, 2, and 3 and these map to the that same uh, list that we have here so let's go to our timer so we just need to add some values for this. We'll start out with control status. That was the first register. Let's see, then we had our counter low and our counter high. And compare registers, we have four of them. So you can see that maps directly to the CS, C low, C high, C0 to 4, C0 through 3. And let's add a define so that we can access this structure. 
call it regs timer and we're going to go from p base plus 0x 0000 and 3000 so now we'll be able to make use of that in our code now let's see we go over here to our not many you are our irq.c let's actually create a new file here timer.c and we're going to start by adding including some headers Now we'll start with our timer init function. So this is going to initialize our timer. And actually, let's add a const value here for our interval that we're going to uh, initialize it to. We're going to initialize it to clock hertz. So it should essentially mean every one second it's going to else and we'll create a value to hold the the current value of our clock as well so now when we initialize it the first thing we're going to want to do is set this current value to our regs timer and we're going to get the control low so that's going to give us the, the low 32 bits of our 64 bit counter So now our current value, we want to um, add add the interval to it. So basically, we're getting the current value. We're setting the new value to be that plus the clock hertz, and we're going to set that on compare one. We'll set that value. So that's going to trigger an interrupt whenever this goes to here. And compare one maps over here to IRQ one. Let's see. Actually, I th think we need to rename those IRQs because they, they're zero based. Let me check here. Yeah. So uh, this should be IRQ0, IRQ1, IRQ2, and IRQ3. So now IRQ1 is the one that we're going to map that to. And that one we know is usable because they're all, not all usable. Some are used by the video core internally. So now we've set our compare register for the next value that it's going to pick up. So let's go over to our irq.c file. And we're going to actually add that when we enable the interrupt controller. Right now we're just doing AUX IRQ. So now we're going to say, yeah, also we're going to add sys timer IRQ1. We'll do that for both 3 and 4 and let's see we need to add it in the handler as well here so in our little loop here we're also going to check if it's the system timer one if so first we're going to unset that bit from our irq that we read and handle it well, let's just call it handle timer one so we need to create a function for that First, we'll add that over to the header. Include this header too, timer.h. Looks like we're going to create another timer. This this uh, timer.h is just going to be for the kernel and others to use for the shared functions. So we have the timer in it and the handle timer one. So going back to here, we'll create a function called handle timer one, and this is going to be a pretty simple function. All we're going to do okay. The first thing that we want to do is get our current value one, and we're going to add again add this uh, interval one to it. And the same thing we did here before, we're going to set our compare register to that current value. And 
next we're going to want to use another register here the control status register we want to or equal onto it the uh, SysTimer IRQ1 so that'll tell it to go start again with the comparisons and we'll just print a little message timer1 received so we should see that every clock hertz so every one second so let's go ahead and let me see we'll start a build actually first yeah we want to initialize the timer so <clears throat> inside of our kernel we're going to call timer init and uh, so now the kernel will initialize it right after it enables the IRQs so we should be ready to do a build here make clean let's uh, make for version Raspberry Pi 3 build successful so I'm going to go ahead and set up the Pi, put my SD card in it, and let's boot it up. Alright, so here we have exception level 1, timer 1 received, and you can see about every one second we're getting that. Looks like we forgot to put a return there. So let's go ahead and add a slash in. Where did we put that? In the timer.c. So since we're going to rebuild, let's go ahead and just rebuild for Raspberry Pi 4 so we can see that it works on the Raspberry Pi 4 too. I like to swap back and forth so that we can see the codes running correctly on both boards here. So let me go ahead and put this SD card in the Raspberry Pi 4. Let me boot it up. Go, yeah, exception level one, and then we're there. We go every one second, you'll see timer one received. So that's a good start. Let's go ahead and we can actually use another one of these timers as well. So if we look at the list here, timer one is usable, timer three is usable, zero and two are actually used by the GPU internally, so we can't really play around with them tried messing around with them it just doesn't work I didn't get any serious errors or anything it just with with no reason it's just not working so let's go ahead and call this one interval to actually interval 3 so it's consistent with our uh, timer I just copy this and change all these ones to 3 essentially Okay, so we have the initialize done for 3, and we'll add another handle timer 3. And again, just change all these 1s to 3s here. Okay, so now we have the handle. Let's go ahead and add that to our header file. So now, in our enable interrupt controller, when we added uh, sysirq1, we also want to add 3. And a handler as well. Okay, so now it should be ready to run, but let's actually go and change this interval. So instead of every one second, let's make it you know every quarter of a second so we should see roughly four of these for every one of those so we should see timer three received four times and then timer one received roughly it might be off a little bit but it should be about that so let's make clean we'll make this one on pi three okay let me the SD card here in the Raspberry Pi 3 and boot it up. All right, let's go to our console and there it's booting up. There you see 333, three, three, 1, you see a bunch of 3's 
All right, so let me just stop this. So you see there's a bunch of threes and then one, four threes, one, four threes followed by one. So here, here we show we can have two sets of timers. If, if so, we need to use more than one. So that's, now let's move on to actually creating a sleep function. And for that, we can use these high and low bit registers here or not high and low bit, but high and low words. So at 0, 04 and 0, 08 we have the high and the low. So the system counter is lower 32 bits and the system count is higher 32 bits. This is just a 64 bit counter of how many clicks it's been since the Pi booted up. So and we've already <laughs> added that to our structure so let's just create a little U64 timer get ticks. So this function will get the number of ticks since the Raspberry Pi booted up. So first we want to get the high which we can get from timer counter high. And now again we'll do the same thing to get the low counter low. Now there can be one issue if we read the high first and then read the low. So I'm going to do a double check if the high actually changed after we set it, let's go ahead and just grab those values again. It, it could be a rare occurrence, but it might happen. So let's say, so if high is not equal to that high value, so it's changed between there, let's just take these and we'll, we're going to grab it again. And this is just being cautious. So what are we going to return here? We're actually going to take these two 32-bit values and change them into a U64. So first we'll take the high, H, I, shift it over by 32 bits in order, uh, or it with the low. So now we'll have a U64 out of those two 32-bit values. So now with that we can create a simple sleep function. We'll just call it timer sleep and we'll take in U32 milliseconds. Just add a comment because MS, some people might think it's microseconds, but in this case it's milliseconds. Every one tick is going to be a microsecond, but we want to do it at the millisecond level. So first we're going to go to uh, value start, which we grab the start ticks. So now we essentially want to just loop while get ticks is less than our start value plus the milliseconds times a thousand because they're microseconds by default. I'll just put an empty section here. So that should be enough for us to do a, a nice timer sleep function. So let me just copy that and put it into our timer header. First thing you need to include common because I'm using U32 there. And I might as well add the U64 timer get ticks as well. Now let's go ahead and use those in our kernel.c file. I'll just say right after we log the exception level, let's say we'll print out sleeping for 200 milliseconds. Right, we'll call timer sleep. Oh, yeah, let's include the header here. All right, timer sleep. There we go. And 200. Let's do that a couple of times just so you can get a feel for how fast it's actually working. So now we'll sleep again, this time for two seconds. So we'll make that 2,000. We'll do that twice and then we'll sleep for five seconds. Yeah, actually this is two seconds, two seconds, and five seconds. And then we'll just put a little done print message here. Alright, let's rebuild. Let me stick the SD card back in here. There we go. Alright, so let's put the card back in the Raspberry Pi and boot it up here. And there we 
go. Let's let's remove these timer receive messages. It's gonna make it hard to read. So for now, I'm just gonna comment these two lines out. That way, we can actually see our print messages. That'll keep the timers running. It's just we're going to not have to see all that extra logging. All right. Let's put the card back in the Raspberry Pi. Open up our console. There you go, sleeping 200 milliseconds, and then two, two, five, and you can see it's roughly two seconds and roughly five seconds. So there you go. I think that's a good stopping point. We got to see how this, uh, how the timers work and how you can use those. Actually, let's make th make this for version four too, just to double check. Here we go. And I'll put it into the Raspberry Pi 4. Alright, let me move these cables over, put the SD card in, and we'll go ahead and boot it up. Switch to the console, here we go. And there you go, sleeping 2, sleeping 2, and sleeping 5. And done. Okay, again, I think that's a good stopping point. We've learned how to use the system timer interrupts and create a simple sleep function so we can sleep for a specified number of milliseconds. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoy playing around with the Raspberry Pi at the low level and sharing my experience with, with you. If you enjoyed this video and learned something from it, please, please like and subscribe to the channel. I have a lot more content coming up soon and please comment with anything you'd like to see covered in this series. I think in the next video I'll start working on a simpler, simple scheduler or possibly some memory management. And thanks again for watching.